Keep on clapping, ladies and gentlemen. Strength of women. Keep on clapping. Keep on clapping, please. To see choke. I think Betty Adera was one of the contestants in Madam President, right? Yes, a finalist for that matter. Karibu sana. Next up, I'd like to call to the stage uh, Bina Maseno, Director of Badili Africa. <laughs> Karibu sana, Bina. <laughs> Bina does amazing work through Badili Africa, and they, they, they work with young women who ideally most organizations don't target. And by the way, she has shared the same stage with Barack Obama. <laughs> Next up, I'd like to call to the stage Nerima Wako, Chief Executive Officer of Siasa Place. We like to call her small but mighty for obvious reasons. Siasa Place also does amazing work with young people and they educate young people on the, on the constitution of Kenya. <laughs> Last but not least, uh, one of our elders in the space a very witty woman. Well, I'd like to take this uh, very, very important opportunity to call to the stage Bet Siengo, President, Orange Democratic Movement Women League. Makofi Kwake. Karibu sana. I, I had her mention that uh, color she's wearing doesn't represent a political party. It was her mood for the day. <laughs> All right. Just before this panel, the hot discussion starts. Ladies and gentlemen, to start us off with a creamy foundation, we bring on stage the one and only William Eba with a very passionate Presentation or strength of a woman. Please, I told you, you can come up. Apakuna haters. Poleni. Will you ever? Please. Thank you so much. Are you happy to be here? You're here to be happy. Both. So my name is Willie Oeba. And as I stand here, literally, I'm product of a woman. And it is just more than that. So this is tribute to Mama. I write for girls. I write for girls who don't know why I write. I write for girls who don't appreciate how I write. I write for girls. So to all the girls who have ever broken my heart, just know my mama doesn't like you. So never ask a girl why she is in love with you. More so when it doesn't make you so happy when you look into the mirror because these girls can be very petty. You see, maybe she's in love with the way you look when you sleep. And if she dare tells you it's because of your personality, then maybe don't look as good. It is better she tells you she doesn't know why than she has no reason. Because when these girls decide to leave you, they will have
have any reason. These girls will be like, the problem is me, not you, any woman who want to be with you. When these girls tell you this, congratulations. You have found yourself a new ex-girlfriend and your girlfriend so your ex-girlfriend has a new girlfriend. These girls don't like it when you have so much time to live your mind to share. These girls like it when you're truthful but not the truth that you don't have money. So most of these girls are not prepared. Well, these girls cry. These girls cry when they're happy. These girls cry when they're mad. These girls cry when they're scared. All I'm trying to say is sometimes these girls cry when they're not supposed to. These girls will fall in love with you for the comedian that you are but once you get into a relationship you see it's being funny. Some of these girls knock on open doors. The way some of these girls have saved you on their phones only God knows. Most of these boys act funny but these girls can't tell because they have shaved this. Now you know why they can't raise their eyebrows. Well, I will say it for the last time. No girl should miss school because of a menses. Period. Because these girls have been hit more than your favorite songs have been on the play. Well, these girls become mothers. Mothers who give us education, some of them can't even spell. I'm here to tell you that it is well. Because these girls have gone through a lot and went through is the heavens because on earth they have been through so much hell because my mama never raised voices now she raised the son so i told to the man that i am you see i use my mama's second name because she is masculine with belly muscles that stretch from the first second third to the ninth month but even stronger lip muscles that utter words that move my soul you call this the strength of a woman these are just words that have motherly touch from my mama in low tones whispers and mama you see she has figure trust me forget about that because she's my fatherly figure now it won't match it's fast in this chat list not on the anatomy of the waist downwards but from the neck upwards now she is the head of the family well these words are sick because she has blood pressure that won't kill her, her smile is sweeter than diabetes the mortality of a smile defies the fact from dust to dust cause she's never upset unlike the soil when you add water she never turns mad she's the little kind of short people you'll ever strain to look up to her head is like a funny six-story building because she is smart upstairs well she walked in drugs and tattered clothes to feed us that is why she's always smart up here so i don't need tyra to tell her how much she is my role model because she doesn't walk straight but trust me the footprints in which i follow from her are straight walks not in transparent clothes so that god can see her through now she's prosperous not good in football but in everything she always chipped in i bet she had so many other goals in life tribute to mama of an artist, eh? Ata kwa ndikia lyrics, eh? Okay, so in the previous presentation by Drood, uh, she mentioned something very important on why women uh, need to participate in politics and why women should participate in politics. And she mentioned rights. And that took me direct to our constitution and um, Article 38 of the Constitution on Political Rights is very clear in terms of how uh, participation should look like. And I will read it verbatim. It says, every citizen has a right to free, fair, and regular elections based on universal suffrage and free expression of the will of the election. Of the election. For A, any elective public body or office established under the Constitution, and B, any office or any political party of which the citizen is a member. As we reflect on that, I would like us, I'd like my panelists to think about why do we need gender parity in political parties? Can we unpack that? Why is it important to have gender parity in political parties? 
I will start with uh, my left. list of women towards democracy in our context today. The personal view has actually been has a, <laughs> has actually been political parties. If political parties get their act right, then Kenyans will be presented with a high number of women candidates from which to choose from, right from, you know, MCA all the way, all the way up. And I'm thinking political parties are learning and are reflecting with every other successive uh, general elections and I, representing the Women Congress of Kanu, we can say that we are that party that holds the history of what has happened good, and also what perhaps could have done differently. And we have reflected on why it is important to have women, and women representing the diversity of women, right from women you know, living with disabilities, women who are from the, past, the, the marginalized communities, young women, and a whole array you know, of women. So specifically, what needs to be done and what we are working on right now is to ensure that the party instruments, first and foremost, speak to gender parity. We have to start from there. So we have revised our party constitution, and we have institutionalized the sector uh, for women, we have institutionalized the sector of youth. We have institutionalized the sector of uh, persons living with, with, with disabilities. And we have ensured that in our neck, that is the most powerful organ of our party, we actually have 50, 50 uh, gender representation. Secondly, and as I uh, conclude, doing that, we have actually realized that now we are beginning to have even more women than men because we have a structure purely for women. We have the mainstream where we are insisting that the, the, the representation there must be 50-50. So there's a 50 there plus for women. In the youth uh, sector, we are also insisting on a 50-50. On a so overally, you're going to find that now the women have it. But to what extent is the numbers beginning to work for the women? To what extent then are we questioning those instruments? To what extent are we opening up the spaces for these women, you know, in those particular spaces to move things around to ensure that one, not just the face of the woman is represented, but even in action. We have just revised our election rules to ensure that we want to be the party that presents the highest number of women aspirants to Kenyans, for Kenyans to elect them or not to elect them. But we just don't want to present for the sake of presenting numbers. We are deliberately looking at what are some of the challenges that women face as they run for public office. And some of those were eluded by the professor in the previous uh, 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 presentation. We want to look at how can the party really come out and say, Betty, you are an aspirant for MP position in Westlands, we want to support you to succeed. And we want to look at every other woman aspirant, you know, um, uh, in, in, in that sense. And I want to believe that if we take it from the political party's perspective and then get things right there, deal with the messy party primaries as we have always seen it, make the playing field level for women of all walks of life, and we do that across the political parties, then I think we will begin to start saying as a people that yes, Kenya is on its path and rightful path to securing the democracy that we have so fought uh, very hard for. 
Thank you very much, Betty. Uh, Nerima, the same question to you. From a CSO perspective, why do we need gender parity in political parties? Um, thank you, Rukista. It's, um, I was trying to think of the points of how I would say this. And the thing is, when it comes to representation, it's, it's about women now, but the Constitution is talking about both genders. It's about everyone's representation. So it's important to have representation and influence. Uh, that's completely different because influence means that you can make decisions, change decisions, you can create, you can design. And the importance of having women is we're able to design something new. While you are calling us up here, all of us have handbags. And our priority was <laughs> who can watch our handbags? Thank you, Wanja. So women, the way we perceive environment is completely different from men. Men do not carry handbags. Uh, we are thinking of safety, we're thinking of security, but most importantly, the amount of items that we carry in there can be changing the world. We have things that even our children, we foresee what they're going to need in our bags. So what am I trying to say? When women are in platforms that can make decisions, they foresee issues that men might not necessarily be able to see. We can talk about security. We've had the previous presenter talking about how we need to make politics safer for women, but we also had her talking about changing the political dynamics. The kind of violence that we see right now in political parties, frankly, if women were in positions of power to make decisions, we would not be having some of that violence that we see. We wouldn't be, because it does not make sense to us. So here we are, we've just had a very powerful poem about a powerful woman in a young man's life. Women are the ones who are building homes right now. They manage the unit base, which is the family. So no one can argue here. When it comes to money, women are the best in terms of organizing, in terms of figuring out which biashara, which chama to go to, where to get money from for school fees, for food, with 1,000 shillings. They can do so much, including even educating, you don't even know how many children, because of investing. Imagine if she was in government and having enough representation of those women in government, we would see change almost immediately. And that's the difference between having women in positions of power and those who are able to influence change and the fact that they even see the diverse issues and bring them to the table, but what? Thinking of the family first, because it's natural. We are nurturing. So even when we talk about how governments have been formed, women are always in the background. They participate, but they're in the background. Even let me just to close, if we talk about the independence of this country from the freedom fighters, who do you think was feeding those freedom fighters to go and fight, to get that energy to fight? You think the men were cooking? What were they eating? Women have always been there, but they are never mentioned in the history of change. And even when I think about Libya with Omar Mukhtar, it was a huge wave where they were fighting the Italians from taking over Libya. It is women who are organizing and forming and deciding how to feed men because guess what? Men cannot fight on a hungry stomach. They can't even organize. Food is the most important basic need. And when you look at food, the ones who do the creation of food, the farming, the access to land, the marketing, again is who? Mama Mboga. And that's the difference between women's representation and women's influence. Thank you for that deep insight, and we do draw from that in terms of the intrinsic value of women over and above that they also have instrumental value in these spaces. Bina, the same question to you. Why do we need gender parity in political parties? Really, after speaking after Betty and Nerima, you know, so there's really um, not, um, not so much to say, but I want to say uh, personally why that is important is because Political parties form the government of the day, to start with, right? Political parties are the vehicles, right, that form the government of the day. 
And if the government of the day is not cognizant of half of its population or engaging half of its population, because when you talk about democracy, you cannot say democracy exists when half of the population is not fully engaged, right? So for me, if we're looking at forming the government of the day, and that government uh, of the day uh, is not cognizant of your unique needs, especially as women and girls. And I'm saying as women and girls because women and girls bear the brunt of poor politics in this country. Talk about gender-based violence. Talk about femicide. Talk about human trafficking. I mean, talk about female genital mutilation, you know? Talk about all those things. Talk about unemployment. I think there's a study by ILO that speaks to the, like, the number uh, of uh, unemployment uh, rates in the country is skewed towards women more than men. So when you, talk, when you look at all these things and women and girls bearing the brunt of poor politics, then at the end of the day, you want to ensure that women actually infiltrate not only leadership positions within political parties, but nationally, in the communities, um, in the, you know, in the local, um, you know, in the assemblies, in the national parliament, like infiltrate all these leadership positions everywhere. And again, when you still talk about political parties forming the government of the day, who mobilizes for them? Who votes for them? Like there's been numerous research that speaks to like women forming the bulk of the voters in this country, women forming the bulk of the mobilizers in this country. So ideally we are saying that women at the end of the day are the ones who actually form the government of the day, but they're not seen, the efforts are not seen at the end of the day. You know, the efforts are not seen because also when you look at political parties in this country, for lack of a better example, they are properties of men. You know, even when I hear us talking about whether it is youth wings, women wings, why don't we have men wings? You know, why, you know, like even when you just look at the different quarters within, so it just tells you the owners of that party. And that is why we cannot even have men wings because the owners of the political parties, the people who fund political parties, the people who have the financial muscle to start political parties are men. So at the end of the day, things will be skewed towards men. At the end of the day, things will be skewed towards men because even from the formation, from the funding, from the running, everything is by men, right? And for me, where I even see change happening is to begin to even infiltrate the governing boards of the political parties. It doesn't help just maybe being uh, the leader of the youth league. You know, become the SG of the party because they are very powerful when it comes to making decisions, uh, uh, you know, um, in this country. You know, so for me, I'm seeing us infiltrating every powerful position within the political party. Because right now, as a person who is also in the youth league and maybe in the leadership of the youth league, let me tell you, at the end of the day, when I'm running for office and uh, you hear that um, maybe um, um, my, my, you know, my certificate during the party primaries has been stolen or whatever happens during the party primaries, you don't have much power. You know, you don't have much power because of the pos your, your position within the political party, right? So I think for me, it's important for us to infiltrate every position within the political party that is a powerful position because then it results to better outcome for women and girls, whether it's in healthcare, uh, she spoke about security, whether it is in security, whether it is uh, in education, because we bear the brunt of all that. Um. I'd like to come to you, Kiongozi Beth, um, that in as much as women are bearing the brunt of poor politics and poor leadership, I was, I was uh, surprised to find out that it is also women who give party visibility. All the colorful things that are happening around political parties, it is women that are the center of that. So the same question to you, why do we need gender parity in political parties? Thank you, Wilkinsta. Um, my name is Beth Siengo, the ODM Women League President, and um, I've said it this uh, purposely to mention my title because it, it has to do with women. I want to start by saying women's rights are human rights. Democracy is for both men and women. 
So in each political party, for real, we need uh, gender parity. It's because um, much has been said by my colleagues here, and it is true, that uh, for us to have a cohesive nation, we need both gender to be represented in leadership and both gender to have their rights met and both gender also to have say in the leadership of a nation. So I would say it is very important for each party to make sure they give space to women. And that is what has happened in my party, ODM, the largest, strongest party, East and Central Africa. That is why we have structures and the real structures. We have the mainstream where leadership is held by both men and women. We have Women League where I am the president. And we have structures from the lowest level in the community. We have elected officials from the uh, village level, ward level, constituency level, county level, to the national where I sit. And we have Youth League uh, with the same structures from the, all the levels. And we have Disability League with all the structures at all levels. This is to give women space. And as women in ODM, we have been given space because we are kind of semi autonomous in our running of our activities. And uh, we are given the mandate to ensure that we increase the number of women in leadership. And as we wait for the next general election, um, we have decided as Women League in ODM to make sure that uh, women are increased in numbers at the ballot and to ensure that we have come up with different strategies to ensure that, uh, first of all, women become members of political party. Because I would want to say this to the nation, women, let's not sit down and wait because nobody will come for you from your house to become a leader. And the starting point, as one of us said, that political parties are vehicles to get into leadership. And political parties are meant with a sole responsibility or with the intention to grab power. So women must join the political parties and become members. That is the starting point. So as Women League in ODM, we have made deliberate efforts to uh, make women, to encourage them, to mobilize them and make sure that they join our party in numbers. Secondly, we have made deliberate efforts to make sure that women are capacitated, uh, capacity build to make sure that they will be good leaders. We are not presenting the numbers just for the sake of numbers, but we are sure to identify right and strong women who can make good leaders. And by that, we have opened doors for women to uh, apply for those who want to run for next year's election. And as I sit here, we have over 400 women who have sent their applications and their profiles for those who are running for different political seats. And then we are also moving, as Women League, we have produced a training manual for the women candidates, those who are vying for elective positions next year. And we have started already training women across the nation. As I sit here, we have done about uh, seven counties in the country where we have gone and all the women who have applied to run for political positions next year, we train them, take them through preparation for next year to make sure that many women will be elected. The next thing we have done is um, our structures in the party. Our NEC, National Executive Committee, we have more than a third of women in that leadership. And when we have any agenda to move for concerning women and putting women in leadership, we have enough numbers to push and lobby for that. And so I would say that uh, we have also lobbied our neck to ensure that uh, those women who come out will be supported and through the party primaries, women will be given certificates where the party is very strong. So that those who are given uh, party 
certificate to run for any elective position, they are assured of winning because if they are given pos uh, certificates where the party is strong, then they will win. Uh, we have other different strategies that I may not uh, elaborate each one here, but for sure we are committed as a party. And even as a person myself, I love women empowerment. And we are looking at how can we do at, a, at the party level as women in ODM to support each other. That's why in our, in our women league, all the sen women senators or the women members of parliament, the MCS, they are members of women league and we are set to support each other, to hold each other sister's hand to make sure we increase the number of women on the ballot. Thank you. Wow, Asante Sana for that very important submission. And I want to pick on the, on the general theme of what you've said is that change in terms of gender parity needs to be institutionalized. There needs to be a particular method, you know, to have it as a deliberate attempt from the party itself to have more women. And I'd like to come to you with this question, Nerima. Uh, Kiongozi Betsiengo has mentioned um, the Women League. I've had Bina mention the Youth League, and I believe you as well. Now, when we come to women, and we define women, the, the women are diverse, all right? We have women who are people living with disability. We have young women. You know, we have the elite women. We have, you know, women in different social classes. So when we talk about the leagues, an example is when a young woman joins the women league, she's told to go to the youth league. When she goes to the youth league, uh, they throw her back to the women league. And a very interesting article I read by Stella Diritu that the connotation of the word youth is a young male and not a young female. So do you think we are shooting ourselves in the foot by putting different leagues rather than a mainstream system to have leadership representing uh, gender and youth? Do we think we are shooting ourselves in the foot? Are we double marginalizing the different groups, especially women, by having uh, the different leagues where we have the marginalized groups? Nerima. Thank you, that's a good question. Um, I wouldn't say that we're shooting ourselves on the foot because your comment is very similar to what happens with the women rep position, where even women are told, don't you have a position for women, leave member of parliament alone, or even you're told, just go for that seat, you have your own seat. And, and that's what happens with affirmative action sometimes. Um, it, can, it can be utilized negatively, but it always comes from the majority as a way to create an obstacle. But if I was to say that we clamp them together, I know, because we work with political parties, especially the youth wings, as Siasa Place, and the first thing that I always get from the youth wings is do not, do not clamp us with the women uh, because they take over. They take over everything, all the resources they take over, and nothing ever trickles down to us. And it's interesting, Stella Nderitu's article is very, very true. And that's also an area that uh, Badili is very focused on with young women. And there are many other several factors that create obstacles for young women's engagement just because of the societal pressures, one, but also number two, how do women engage with politics? Even the, through my engagements, I normally find sometimes I can be the only woman in the room with the youth leagues. And that also shows you that a lot of times when I do ask, uh, she's busy, she's out of town, she had to go uh, take care of her child who's unwell, like their schedules are completely different and the women's representation is a lot lot lower. In fact, Bina will tell you, dismally low compared to young men. So it's not, about, it's not about youth just being seen as a man's perspective. It's about us creating platforms where we are intentional about engaging young women. Because the battle that I also see is the intergenerational gap, where you find young women who want to participate, even in the women leagues, but they're not welcomed. 
or a lot of times uh, it's also a battle between young women and women who are experienced and have been there for a long time. I remember there was a meeting that the CMD hosted and it was at um, Safari Park, maybe two years ago, this is before COVID, and it was a women's engagement. I'm not sure if any of you were there, but you were there, yes. And remember, the conversation shifted from respect the young women need to give women who have been in politics and young women basically complaining that they are not mentored enough and there are not enough platforms for them. And the fact that they see men, young men being mentored by men and even for them to be able to receive some form of support, men are more open to them than women politicians. That's what now that whole conversation became and it became a battle between uh, women who are coming into the political space and women who have been there for a while. So there are challenges in terms of their intergenerational challenges, I believe. But also, it's hard to entice women to enter politics. I mean, by the time you're entering politics, you're a strong woman. And even by the time you're entering, you have the risk of either being stripped there are too many women who have shared openly that they've been stripped before. And the fact that we've had a comment where someone said, why must you almost become like a man? Because of the platform, it is basically a boxing ring. And so there are women who have to wear bikers, or they're talking about the levels of security that they have to be able to enter a space. And I don't even want to talk about the sexual harassment but sexual harassment exists in political parties. A lot. a lot. Young women have to be in men's beds to be able to rise up or even to be able to negotiate. And there are no mechanisms. I mean, a gender desk might exist, but what does it do? You go and report and then it dies there because of this sort of control that Bina has already mentioned that exists in parties. So. We have to talk a lot more about how can we protect and create a safe platform for engagement, and then you will begin to see a lot more younger women getting into the space. Because right now, to enter politics, you will be termed as crazy if you are a young woman. Thank you. Uh, before I come to the representatives from uh, you know Kanu and uh, ODM, Bina, I'd like you to weigh in on this. Are we shooting ourselves in the foot? Uh, by having different leagues, like the women leagues for championing uh, certain issues, or is it a structure that is working for political parties? Hmm. I think for me, I'd like to speak to just how everything is structured within the political party. And the fact that even when it comes to the women leagues and youth leagues, we fuel them more towards the election. That is one. And then also the nature of our political parties because they're so fluid, you know. So right now you're in, uh, you know, party X. Then after the next election, the party is not there and I have invested all my energy, whether it's in the women leagues, I'm uh, um, in the, you know, like in the youth leagues, right? But uh, even when it comes to the women leagues, and the youth leagues. I feel also the other lot that we don't see, um, grassroots women mobilizers within the, you know, like who don't infiltrate the women leagues, but who do the work of even increasing party, mem party membership, right? Like we don't see them. So like the amazing training that um, ODM is doing right now. I think my question, even whether it's to ODM, to Kanu, to all the other parties out there, would be, because most of these parties have, um, um, you know, they have uh, village representat representation, um, constituency, ward, all the way up to the National League, right? And most of those are elective positions. They are elective position. How are we capacity building them? You know, because we speak more about capacity building women leagues and youth leagues. How are we capacity building them? I think I'd be very keen on that because we work with Chama women, right? And majority of them, they break their backs to increase party membership. We have Chama women who are running for political party positions currently, and uh, they've been doing the work of recruiting members to the party who are going to vote for them, 
right? So you chuck your own money because there's some fee to be becoming a party member to recruit part party members who you hope their loyalty is, you know, will be, uh, you, you, who you hope you'll gain their loyalty and then now they're going to vote for you because you're running for this particular position, right? So the work that they are doing, so even when I look at uh, the, the leagues, right, are they wholesome? You know, are they wholesome? Do they represent these different faces, these different unseen voices, people who are doing, like who are foot soldiers, literally, right? So are they represented? Or do we just have the same faces, you know, you know the same, like do, do we just have the same faces who are the ones who are always representing all the youth? You know, you go to this meeting, maybe same faces, same faces, same faces. So how, I think for me, I'd be more concerned with how balanced are they such that if I'm in the youth league, I'm, if I'm in the women league, representation within this women league represents different people across the country, represents different needs. Because as we are saying, is that women and girls are not homogeneous. So how is that represented within the youth leagues and within the, uh, within the women leagues? And do, like, how do we also raise their visibility? Because I have been in two parties, right? Uh, before, I've been in two parties and also had the privilege of being in the leadership of the party. Uh, well, not national leadership, uh, clearly, uh, but within the leadership of the party. And we had opportunities to even be mentored um, with a different civil society organization. But the women we work with right now, even the Chama women, the Chama leaders we work with right now, when we ask them, they have never attended any of those meetings, but they know so much about the political parties. Someone tells me, Mimi, nimekuwa kwa party for 20 years. Nimekuwa niki mobilize party, ata sasa nataka kuwa ward chair. Wa, you know, wa either party X ama wa party. They have never been in those spaces. So also, how are we raising their capacity to be leaders where they are and to infiltrate the different party structures? Yeah. Um, I'd like to throw this to you, but as... Uh a woman uh, who has been leading in the political space and I believe who has grown through the ranks within the political party uh, space. What do you think? Because I saw you nodding when Nerimo was giving her sentiment. So I'd really like to, to get an insight as to what do you think? Are we double marginalizing ourselves by putting up those leagues or is it a structure that is working? Thank you. Uh, I would like to say that um, the leagues that we have is only for organizational purposes. It is not that we are marginalizing any, any group. Uh, if I may give an example of uh, ODM Women League, uh, actually within the Women League we have young and vibrant. These are purely young women, those who have gone through high school, those who are in colleges, and uh, young who are interested to join politics. And we are making deliberate efforts to reach out to those young women because we, are, uh, we, we, we intend to mentor them. So uh, the reason why I was uh, noting what she was talking is because we have not marginalized. We have young and vibrant women in politics and within the league. When we talk of the youth, yes, they are youth, but um, the leadership of the youth league also with the structures at all levels, they also involve and must as a rule and within our constitution of the party that not more than two thirds of the same gender should be in leadership within the youth league in any level. So they are not marginalized. Again, I would say that um, actually mentorship is very key because for for some of us who are in leadership today will not remain there forever. We must give way for others to come up. So the policy of holding a sister's hand comes very practical and very handy. That we must uh, walk with the young women so that they see, they know, they learn, and they get trained. We build their capacity so that they also come up and become leaders. So um, we don't want to have vacuum in leadership or in any position within the party structures. So having the leagues is not marginalizing, but it is only for organizational purposes and actually to have order within the party for the structures. 
you very much. Uh, kindly prepare your questions. Uh, I'll take a few questions, but uh, before that, I'd like to ask you, Betty, a young woman living with disability, where would they go in the structure of a political party? And as a young woman yourself, is this a struggle you had before you settled on, this is the part of the party where I feel I fit? And have you drawn, what kind of, uh, you know, what kind of value have you drawn from being in the space where you occupy? Thank you very much. Uh, disclaimer, eh? I'm not a young woman. <laughs> I'm almost 50 years old. <laughs> However, I work a lot uh, with young women within the political party, Kanu, uh, as the national chairperson for the Women Congress, and also through my own, you know, foundation, Betia Dera Foundation, and I'm also um, like patron for Young Women Forum in Africa. So I brush shoulders almost every day uh, with the young women, and I'm so honored to have come today uh, with my colleague uh, Wanja. Wanja is sitting right there. She's waving. Maybe she can speak at some point. And uh, we are with her in Kanu, and she's actually the head of the caucus for the persons who are living with disabilities, which is an institution that has been institutionalized, a structure that has been institutionalized within our party's uh, constitution. Now, the, the question around mentorship is one that I think cuts across. While I have said myself that I am no, not a young woman myself, um, reaching out to more experienced uh, women in the political space is a struggle. It is a struggle. And except you get out, you know, of your way specifically to develop a personal relationship with so and so, then perhaps it might not be, be easy. But by virtue of, of my age and perhaps, you know, some of the positions I have held, I make myself available to fill that gap to that young woman, it doesn't matter the party, to that young woman who might want to tap into my, into my experience or pick my thoughts uh, of, uh, on something. Now, your broader question is around, are these structures, the Congresses, marginalizing even further? Let me give you a practical example. Like we know, I'm in Kanu, right? And Kanu is part of the One Kenya Alliance right? Four principles, all men. I was invited to a meeting once, two, three weeks ago, in Rift Valley. But that was a meeting that the women were being invited as a second thought. We were not featuring anywhere in the original grand scheme of things. So they had meeting number one, meeting number two, they created a technical committee doing this, that, and the other, division, you know, of labor and all that was done. Then after meeting three, is when they are realizing, ah, yeah, atuna, atuna wanawake, atuna gender. So now, you party bring one, one. <laughs> this is reality. And really, as women and young women, for that matter, you want to get into this political space, we have to speak reality. Let's speak about how can we strengthen build capacity of a woman, of a young woman, so that she knows how to navigate this internal party politics, so that at the end of an election period, you're either elected, you are nominated, or you are appointed. I think those are the conversations you know, we need to have. Now, add persons living with disability into the equation. If you are not living with disability, it is that hard. You know now, for a person living with disability, whether you're young or you're mature, it is even, <laughs> it is even more difficult. How do you pay party primaries where everyone is running around and it's chaotic? And you, because of the way you are physically, you can't do that. So that's a structural barrier right there. Structural barriers must be eliminated. And we have to be very, very deliberate at doing that. In the Kanu party, apart from the capacity buildings which we also have, we have special programs 
for persons living with disabilities. We have structures right from the national all the way to the, to the polling station. And for us, we have the Mamambogas, actually. Manning, you know, a polling station. And someone in every constituency, a woman, a youth, and a person living with disability is tasked with the responsibility and resourced on how to reach them down there. Because again, as Bina has said, the mobilizers are the ones who want a jazanga hall. Senor, I need a hall vagina wa mama. Someone is going to do that. And that, 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 that is where that mobilizer comes in. But what really is her role? What really is his role? Is her role just being told, wekula yongi ritatu, just a hall, and then when they do their things in the hall and go away and kaboom, end of, end of story. Time is now for us, especially as women, to ask the question, if we are the ones who put people on those seats by voting so religiously, by voting in our numbers, marginalized as we are, what do we get in return? For me, I, 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 task, I challenge myself, you know, with the position I hold, but I also challenge everyone, civil society, madam, an interparty thing, that can women grassroots be capacity built so that whoever comes asking you for your vote for MCA, make sure you're asking him or her three questions. What is the need for me in your manifesto as a grassroots woman in, 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 in Pumwani Ward? What is the need for me? And let them all come. Then put them in a weighing scale and pick that person whose manifesto speaks to you, speaks to your issues. In terms of representation, uh, like example, my deputy at national level is a young Muslim woman. <coughs> so for us, uh, by way of constitution, we have to ensure that all those leagues have the, represent the face of Kenya, if you see what I mean. From an ethnic perspective, geographic, all these, all these parameters that matter to us, you know, as a people. But in the political space, let me tell you, and this is my truth, if these colleagues are not there, let me tell you, no one will prioritize women issues because the key decision makers in the political space are who? Your guess is as good as mine. Wow, so much honesty. I. Is there a roving mic so that we can have uh, questions from the audience? A roving mic for questions from the audience. I'll take four questions. Uh, one, two. Where are the ladies? Three. Um, four. Quick ones, <laughs> quick ones. Uh, let's just ask one question each. If we have time, we'll take another round. One question each, if we have time, we take another round. Thank you, thank you. So, uh, Please permit me to state a brief comment before I ask my question. And uh, my comment would be that uh, in my very humble view, I would say that as much as we are promoting for women empowerment and gender equality, let us be careful not to sound as if it is a question of which gender is better than the other. Because then that will be a very different conversation from what we are having here. So that if we say that women are actually better than men, we'll find ourselves in a, in, a, in a chaos that would end because, you know. So, so, so for, for example, for Nerima to state my very humble opinion the that, question, the question. That, 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 that a woman is much more better in terms of financial management, and I, would, I would argue and, 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 and give examples of women who have, been, who have misused public funds and have, have cases in court. So let, let it remain a question of participation and, and representation. Now, on to my question. Very brief and yes. straight to the point. So, so my question is, how do we balance gender equality with democracy so that we do not promote one at the expense of the other? 
so that if we have parties saying that they will ensure they will have certificates being given to more women uh, in the upcoming elections. So what does it speak to the democracy at the nomination levels? Are we going to say that some constituencies are going to be compelled to elect women so that we have equality uh, at the parliament level? How, what does that speak now to our democracy as a nation? Thank you. Thank you very much. Your name, please. My name is Ayala. All right. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Moses uh, from uh, Dandora Justice Center. Uh, my question, I think, uh, it would go to the representative from uh, ODM. Uh, in your statement, uh, you have clearly said that uh, you give like an uh, empowerment and uh, like uh, mentorship to the ladies who want to join political spaces. Now, my question would be. Uh, but suppose that uh, there's a lady who has uh, joined the political movement and uh, in sign for a much bigger political seat, like uh, let's say the president, the presidential, like let's say like uh, in this uh, 2022 upcoming. And uh, we all know that uh, the leader of the, orange, of the ODM wants to vie for the presidency. So what action are you going to take to empower the lady? Then uh, another thing is... Uh, Question, just yeah, one, it's, uh, question. one question. You've already asked. Is, is, is still continuing the question. On the, on its, <laughs> You're on denying its. another person the opportunity. Okay, it's on the same question, the, the climax of it. Okay, kindly allow us to take that in the second round. That The first question is noted. Good afternoon, my name is Marcy. So my question uh, would be, you, you've discussed the women leagues and I think here we have uh, women league uh, leaders. So how, my question would be, how do the women get a place at that table that they're saying is crowded with men? Because of course, if you start a women league, you have to put a woman. So now in this mainstream structure, the youth structure, the general party structure. How do women get a say uh, uh, at the table and it's not that they are put at the table as, affirma as an affirmative action? You know, like a, you're put there like a flower girl for the sake of showing Kenya its ba gender balance. So uh, as political women, how do we get the, how do we be women of substance to be at that table? Thank you, Masi. Women power. Hey, I can't feel the power and the men are complaining. We are talking about women. Women power. Eh, wanaume. Uh, my name is Rachel Mwekali. I'm from I'm from Coalition for Grassroots Human Rights Defenders, Kenya. And uh, kudos to you powerful women who are seated there in front. Uh, my question will be directly um, in terms of funding and investment on women political leaders. Why wait a year before election is when we said, let's talk about women and political leadership, where else we know when it comes to politics, um, it's about investment, especially monetary value. Because women, we are good with the agenda, but monetary value. Then the second question will be around um, the idea of, as women, how can we push more, just the way patriarchs do, but I'm not saying we are copying the way patriarchs do. Why can we push more, um, on moving just only on power, but also being budget older. And when I mean this is around the confusion about the, the affirmative action, yeah? Women are doing fantastic work, but the budget, it's peanut. How do you expect them to deliver? So I would love to hear your thoughts on that. And especially encouraging also young women into political parties. Everything is political. We can't assume politics in our LSEA Adam Afens in the political. So I do ensure that more young women, like Nerima, I'm expecting to see you next time, eh? Nairobi president, I'm a Nairobi governor, yeah? I'm a boy, you can be. Thank you, Mikali. Let, let, let the panelists answer those questions, and then we take the next round. I know there's a gentleman right there. 
just let them take those four questions and then the next round, all right? So I think I'll start with you, uh, Beth. The question that was uh, addressed to you by Moses, I believe. So he asked, how do you empower a young woman to run for president within the Orange Democratic Movement when another contender is someone like the right Honorable Raila? <laughs> Thank you. Um, let me say this. Uh, allow me to say our full name, ODM, Orange Democratic Movement. And for real, we are democratic. One, I want to say this. So far, there is no woman who has come out within the party to say that uh, she wants to be a presidential candidate. Two, you have already concluded that His Excellency Raila Molondinga is the only presidential candidate. He has not even declared. He has not. He has not. Let's wait. If he declares, yes. But so far, he has not. So for us, empowering women to participate in uh, uh, political processes, we are not discriminating. Those who want any political elective position, we are empowering, we are capacity building, we are training all of them. So let us cross the bridge when we get there. If there is a woman who will come up to be a presidential candidate in ODM, we are democratic, we have processes, and uh, the, the structures are there that approve uh, uh, any, any decision to be made. So the structures will sit, for example, the neck, and uh, take over the process the way it will come out to be. Thank you. Thank you. Bina, to you, how do we balance gender equality and democracy? And I'm seeing Bina nudging Nerima to run as <laughs> president and ODM. But how do we balance gender equality and democracy? This was from Waiyaki. <laughs> I'm just telling Nerima to present herself to the Orange Democratic Movement because clearly you've had, there's no young woman who's come out. Uh, I think that's an opportunity, uh, Nerima. Um, I think just to uh, briefly respond to his question um, and maybe also to speak to um, also what uh, our ODM national representative was talking about in terms of ensuring that more women participate uh, in election. It's because the ground is not leveled when it comes to women participating in political spaces, right? Talk about even how gender-based violence is skewed towards women. Talk about the rape cases you hear during election that is skewed again towards women candidates, right? Talk about access to resources. Talk about time poverty. Like women candidates even have to balance between their reproductive roles and showing up for politics. You know, you're like, okay, uh, you know, in, in, the, in this era where even unpaid care work, the people who, who, who bear the bulk of it are women, taking care of kids, uh, you know, nursing kids, taking kids to school, um, like even just balancing your domestic role and finding time uh, to, you know, um, to participate in politics. You're talking about, and you've heard all these stories uh, in terms of even political decisions and political meetings that take place at night. At night at 12 a.m., you have to put your child to bed, you have to cook for your kids, uh, and, 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 and uh, also the fact that you still have to um, have resources to pay someone to step in for you when you're not able to do those roles, such that if I'm not able to take my kid to school to do one, two, three, I must have resources to do that. And the fact that also majority of, uh, uh, and this is actually research that has been done as well, majority of the women who enter into political spaces are career women. So you have to resign to actually hit the road. Majority of them are career women. Majority of the men who are participating in political spaces are businessmen. Right? So it tells you that you even have control and power over your time. So when you talk about you know, the balancing, it's because the ground is not level. It's skewed towards one gender, and we're trying to get to a level playing field such that now when you, when you put people out there, you're like, you know what? Now the ground is level. Me, the, you know, uh, what, what is that saying about me? The right person we know. Something about, you know, sorry? 
Yes, you know, when it's level, then we can be like, may the best man win at the end of the day. But as long as it's not level, we have to ensure that we put mechanisms in place that help each gender to participate equally. Yeah. Thank you, Bina. I'd like to come to you, uh, Betty. Mwikali asked, how come investment in women is done one year to the election? It almost looks like a rat race with everyone coming with resources just at the tail end of getting a, into the positions for rather into elective offices. So how come investments, and I believe you asked in the context of political parties and uh, their partnership with other partners, how come investment happens one year to the election or in the last minute? It's unfortunate that the way our politics is structured in Kenya is that immediately after like a general election, instead of giving time, you know, for implementation and, um, you know, implementation and, and, and governance, it's almost like campaigns in answer to like the next day for the next, you know, five years to come. And people kind of like get fatigued, uh, get fatigued with that, not giving much attention um, to, 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 to governance. Now, when it comes to uh, the fact that we wait until the last minute, personally, I, am, I, I, I hold a different view. Because if you look at what political parties do, immediately an election has come to an end, they sit back, or at least that's what we do in Kanu. And look at ourselves in the face and say, hey, we did not do well, or we did well, or you know, what went wrong, what went right, and how can we do you know, things differently? So like for us, immediately after 2017, we knew 2022 was coming, and now we had a period of five years to strengthen our structures, to fix our, our constitution, to fix all these things that were identified as like weak points in the, in the, in the previous uh, uh, elections. Now, it is one thing, the role of a political party, but it is also another, your role yourself as the person who wants to run. No political party will remove you from your house and say now, lazima we mwenye ujitume, unaona, ujitume. Ndiyo hiyo political party iku, iku wane. Many people, including myself, you know, wait until almost towards the end. Because again, our politics <laughs> revolve around money. Ukianza kuyongelelea kiti mapema sana, you know, <laughs> you might exhaust yourself too soon and have nothing when it will actually matter most. So, so that's when utaona wako tu, you're just seeing dalili ya yule ni kama na, but they are not they are not saying for that same same reason because priorities really change the minute uh, 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 an election cycle is over and even more importantly when a new government you know uh, comes into place however the best practice globally is that there needs not to be a special time for women empowerment women empowerment needs to be an everyday uh, venture an every minute venture and everyday conversation depending on how dynamics change with the years as they come and go empowerment of women need to happen every single day in fact you want a woman president you have to start empowering her when she's in class two as a girl that is just what it's gonna take we need to think about ways in which our girls access school they stay in school they transition they cross over the mentorship, you know, that we talked about expanding political spaces for them to come in and be felt, uh, add value, but also have something, you know, to, to, to take, away, you know, take away from it. So, Rachel, I'm with you on the suggestion that we should not need to wait until Dakikaya Mwisho, although that is like the practice. There's a whole lot of value that we can get if we start sooner, if by now we already knew Nerima, was coming in as Nairobi governor, Rona, <coughs> a lot of things would have, would have happened uh, by now, but it is a learning. We are still a young democracy, and I believe with the time, we are gonna get better. Thank you, Betty, thank you. Nerima, for someone who says they are not a politician, you have a lot on your plate. So, <clears throat> Mathi asked, how do women get space and she specified at the main table. 
because it seems like there are other tables with crumbs and there's a main table where the decisions are made. So how do women make sure they get space at that main table? And I think you also have a comment from uh, Wayaki. Yes. Thank you. Um, let me start with my comment from Wayaki. I think um, it's just to say that sometimes the truth can hurt. Uh, but whether we like it or not, it's the truth. Uh, there are a lot of statistics around how women invest much more into the community. So I'm speaking from a space of facts. It's not opinion. And also, Bina, how much do Chama women invest in Kenya? Is it? 330 what? Billion. Chama women in this Kenya. Yeah. So I think also what we need to be discussing is how these resources to educate women in how it's important to invest in politics. Because the resources are there. A lot of our homes are being run on Chama money that is being led by women. And that's a fact. So to go back to um, what your question from Grace was, um, it's interesting that you asked me that question because I'm a very I'm an outsider, but I do see how um, parties maneuver and work. But it's it's through the neck that has been mentioned over and over again. But the fact that representation has to be mobilized and organized, where I also see youth wings losing they are power is the fact that they are also involved in mobilizing in terms of public rallies and things like that a lot of these politicians wouldn't even have that crowd if it wasn't for say the youth wings or the women leagues that's a fact so how can we capitalize on their organizing within the party to lobby for particular issues and those are some of the strategies that people have to push for but it's difficult when parties are owned. It's a completely different ball game. It's you coming into somebody's house and saying, I want to change the way this is being done. And, and that takes a lot of time and effort and energy. Because as much as we're talking about even um, mentorship with young women, if you want to know whether a party is really mentoring, we should see new party leaders. We should. We can't be having the same people in the parties since the 90s, and they're the same people going for that presidency now. That, that speaks a lot about mentorship, and the answer is there is none. And the fact that even these party leaders, the first thing they think about is it's to go to their children. And, and that's the reality of the mobilization around our vehicles. And that's why it's very difficult to come in. This is somebody's house and you're coming and creating that change. So to answer that question, it would be the power of numbers and people understanding that they can utilize those numbers to push for particular change that they wish to see. But like I mentioned, it is difficult because of the ownership that is involved. And that also means having party leaders who we hope will bend. Because often what happens, you will find yourself like uh, Madam President here, you've been kicked out. You don't even understand how all of a sudden you're not a member of the party. And that's the reality of the parties that exist today. And that brings the challenge. That's why it's very difficult for them to go against what the party leader wants and the way the party should go according to that leader. Thank you very much. I want to take another round of four questions. There was a gentleman at the... Did he take back his question? There's a gentleman right there. So one, two. I really can't see you because the lights are in my face. Eh? I'm looking for ladies. I am looking for ladies. <laughs> the lady just rise up. Probably I'll see you when you rise. Oh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm Dixon. I am from Organization of African Youth. And uh, I have a question, a comment, and observation, if you allow me. Dixon, question. 
but a comment uh, I would really request kindly. You're denying someone else an opportunity. Uh, I, I have not talked since morning session. I was denied a chance in the morning session. The evening session, I was also <laughs> being denied. So my, my comment is this. Uh, I'm kind of confused about the discussion that we have in the evening session. Is it or gender parity or political parties development? Having said that, it's a, a philosopher somewhere who said when dry bones are mentioned, it is only old women who become uncomfortable. Having said that, my question goes straight to Betty or Benta and uh, the representative from the ODM party. Number one, uh, Benta said, with all due respect, that uh, not Benta, but the representative from ODM. She's Betty and Beth. Yes, Beth. She said women will be vying and be given party primary certificates. So my question is, do we give party primary certificates based on how you can deliver or based on your gender? That's number one. Number two is to Benta. Or Betty, sorry. Uh, you've said that uh, your duration of maybe giving your aspirations or what you want of the position is not based on timely value of it. And my question is now this. Recently in ODM party, I know you're not from ODM, but you're from Kanu. We witnessed Joe give a million shillings to be considered for presidential position or a presidential candidate from the ODM party. Uh, we've witnessed Kanu being the longest serving political party in Kenya since independence and it's called the Independence Party. I've never seen a woman party leader in Kanu. So does it mean or does it prove the fact we preach water and drink wine? That's my concern. Having said that, I have no much ado. But I want to no, thank really... Thank you. You're, you've already denied someone else an opportunity. Thank Please you very much. Fair, thank fair. you very much. Yes. Please, just, just give him a minute to ask his question. Who said, uh, who said the MC ceased to be a Kenyan citizen? Rights to participate in the dialogue. Amen? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not up there. I'm down here. I was listening. Ladies and gentlemen, Mine is just very straightforward. My name is Nicholas Songora, Director Manyata Entertainment CBO, and also I coordinate the civil society in coast region of Kenya. Mine is, uh, we are talking about advancing women in political parties, meaning to have women as leaders in this country. Already, we have leaders here who are already in spaces in the political parties. And again, we have women leaders who have advanced further. They are elected. We have those who are nominated. I will give a very small case study in coast region where I come from. These women in power fight every day. They fight ruthlessly on all platforms, one from Kilifi, one from Mombasa, another one is a women representative. The two from Kilifi and Mombasa, they're elected. 
and also women representatives elected, but these women cannot see each other face to face in the podium. There were subgroups that they have mobilized their own people, you know, exchanging words with negativity. And what I'm seeing is, come the next general election, they will all be out of power. So as we want to have more women participate, what are we doing to make those already in power become sustainable in those seats? That is my question. Salam alaikum. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Sasemi, my name is Veronica, coming from Kayole with a group of Wahenga youths. My question is for the two ladies, the president and the Kanu lady. You as people in politics, we as outsiders here, how can you encourage us young ladies to get into politics? How can you mentor us? How can you show us how to lead us to politics? and be blessed. Thank you. So, even as they prepare to answer these questions, sometimes we allude ourselves to the privileges that we have. Do we know that West Pocot County did not elect a single member of county assembly? And that the only woman who was nominated to sit as speaker was impeached and on the day of, of her impeachment, her opponents mobilized women to sing outside the county assembly. So when we speak, uh, let us be cognizant of other parts of this country as well, in terms of gender parity. So uh, to you, Beth, uh, there was a question on party certificates and meritocracy. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Will Kista. I want to say that uh, unless the the participant who has asked the question did not listen to what I said. I said we are preparing women, training them, building their capacity so that they participate in political process, which starts with the party primaries. So we are preparing these women so that they will run for, uh, for party primaries and if they win, they are given certificates. And more so, if they are given certificates in the areas where the party is strong, we are assured of a win. That is what I said. They are not being given direct nomination. They are participating in party primaries. They will go through the nomination process. If they win, then we are assured of them clinching the position. That's what I said. Um, I'd come to you, Betty. A question was asked um, that in as much as you're uh, saying how uh, your party supports uh, you know, gender parity, that there hasn't been a single uh, woman sitting as party leader of Kanu. Yes, and such is the nature of our politics. If you look at the records with the ORPP, we are almost now hitting 80-something political parties and only three are actually having women as the, as the party leader. So my, my take is that that's a conversation that we need to have as a country, as a people, and even part of, <laughs> part of why when the initial OCA meeting pictures you know, came out, there was hardly any woman because right from up there, all the way, you know, were all occupied by, by men and not women. But that doesn't mean that there are no women capable within the Kanu party. Just so as that you know, the deputy party leader for Kanu is uh, our senator, Honorable um, Abshiro Halake, and she's the first woman. So at least we are making progress towards that. Now, our neck, which is the strongest, highest uh, governing council of our party according to our constitution, actually meets the two-thirds gender rule threshold. So we are having many, many more women 
in positions of influence. Remember, party leader is just, is just one of them. We have a young woman from Molo, uh, Molo, Molo constituency in Nakuru, who's actually our deputy SG, and that's a young woman. She's actually under 30, we are talking about. So we are making progress, slow as it is, but I think this is a conversation that we need to have, you know, like across the board. Still, to that, I also want to say that it's one thing to hold the position, to hold the title, but what is your influence with it? I am the national chairperson for the Women Congress. What is the influence that I have with it? To what extent can I move things where it matters on, on, uh, in, in so far as the women agenda is concerned? <coughs> you can be called to a neck meeting, you know, and you have the, the opportunity to sit there. You're actually there, physically present sitting there. But you might sit there and at the end of the day, ata ujasema kitu, na utakuja kutoka bure. How many, both men and women, do we see in both houses in parliament who it takes a whole year, our jawa isema kitu, you know, and we, <laughs> we see this, you know, research is done and, and, and people laugh, laugh at it, but really, you know, are you doing a disservice to the people, your constituents who, who, who put you there? So for me, the bigger question is, one, political parties need to have that conversation across the board. But secondly, to what extent can we continue to strengthen, empower, build social skills, you know, of our women, young women, mature women, so that that influence to make the decision around money, to make <coughs> the decisions around finances and around the constitution and around all these things, you know, that matter. Your, your, your contribution also matters in that discourse. Thank you very much, Betty. Bina, to you, uh, the young lady who spoke last asked about how we are mentoring young women into political leadership or the spaces of political authority. Please speak to that. Uh, thanks, Wilkista. But also, uh, even as I'm listening to this conversation, I also want to just briefly comment on uh, our role as citizens of this country uh, in trying to strengthen these processes. So real quick, like real quick, if you've participated in a party primary before, just lift up your hand and you'll probably tell us which party primary. If you have participated in a party primary before, lift up your hand. Just check around, only one person, and that is Muikali, which is expected, <laughs> right? Party primaries, that is one. Number two, if you belong to a political party, lift up your hand. If you belong to a political party, about, uh, you know, about five, and maybe the rest have a reason, um, maybe why they, you know, why they don't belong to a political party. I think for me, when I even listen to this conversation, there's all these changes that we're talking about is not a reserve of a particular section of people in our society, right? We all have a role to play in, the, you know, in, this, in, in this conversation, even in ensuring that we even have more women in leadership. If you know your MCA here, MCA in your ward, you know your MCA, and if I point at you, you can just tell us the name of your MCA, lift up your hand. You know your MCA. Imagine, th those are about nine, 10 hands, right? Who know their MCA? So we have a role, even when it comes to actually electing leaders, and even just supporting female leadership uh, in this country. On to what Wilkista is asking, um, where I also see a disconnect in this country is also holding the hand of women who vie for political positions at the university level. When I look at even the media coverage of Babu Wino when he was vying for Sonu, I have never seen any woman in the university space being given that coverage. Not by the media, not by the people, not even by the politicians, right? I have never seen anyone being given that coverage or even maybe support by the politician. So I think even within the political parties, there's a role we can play in terms of also holding the leaders, the young women leaders who are vying for these positions at the university level, because as we know, or as we have seen, majority of the household names, political names in this country began their leadership journey from the university space. Name anyone, whether it's James Orengo, whether it's Anyang Nyongo, whether it's Sakaja, whether it's Babu who left Sonu leadership and became an MP. Name them, whether it's even uh, Honorable, I mean, the MP for, the women rep for Homa Bay as well. 
you know, they all began the leadership journey there. So I think we have a role to play, as opposed to waiting for people to come outside, and then now we're trying to see where do you fit. That is one. Um, number two, for the lady who, uh, who is in uh, Kayole, her name? Your name? Veronica. So uh, number one, uh, for what we are doing at Badili, we work with young women under 25 in terms of cultivating their political engagement. So we work with young women in urban informal settlement, and we also work with young women in university because our research in the country shows that the most disenfranchised lot in this country is young women under 25 who don't understand political processes or how politics affects them, right? Under 25. That's such a huge number given that the youth population in this country is about 70%, and young women make the bulk of that number, right? So we are trying to create spaces where young women understand how politics affects them, what avenues are available for participation, and what you can do about it. And we also partner with Siasa Place um, to do that, uh, and to also um, expand our reach, and to also learn from also what they are trying to do. Um, we also have Chama Women Engagement as well. Please, if your mom is in a Chama, Muite. You know, we have those programs as well in Kayole to try and see how, like, how do we organize what they do so that they are visible within political party structure. But I think it's also a challenge to all of us in terms of uh, trickling down this information because I don't think one organization can do much, right? Because of the scope, and then you also don't, don't want to just depend on donor money to do this because it means when it dries up, then you won't do much. So I think it's um, upon all of us to see what we can do in the leadership spaces where we are in, in our small communities, to try and lift up that one person actually who's also thirsty for this information. Thank you very much, Bina. Nerima, I think you can sum up and respond to uh, the question that was asked uh, in terms of what are we doing to make the women that are already in power more sustainable in their seats? I know that right now there are a lot of organizations that are forming uh, programs, including FIDA Kenya, where they are creating platforms for mentorship for those women who are already in elective seats to sort of train young women who are coming in. But also, the main issue here is resource mobilization. Uh, we cannot stress that enough because men have access to more capital because men understand that politics can affect their businesses. So you'll find these uh, groups of people investing in a particular political leader to enter power to push for policies that they support. I feel what we need to do is create sectors of that understanding amongst women to invest in one another. But also the fact that women declare late. And, and that has a lot to do with how so much is at stake. By the time you're declaring, people don't want you to work for them anymore. You will probably lose your job. And again, uh, men have a different advantage compared to women, because these days, everyone is a hustler. And so a lot of people have their own business own businesses, they're self-employed, but it's not the same for women. And it also becomes very tricky for them to say that I want to join this or put my hat in the ring. A lot of times they end up doing it late. So because they're doing it late, they can't fundraise enough. And, and that is the main crux of it in terms of that access. And everything else, I believe, will fall into place with it. All right. So as we sum up this conversation, because we were talking about how can we push political parties to have more women in their structures. And there has been a discussion on political party funding. And um, within the party structures, the funding uh, as per the register of political parties is supposed to go towards you know, when there are women league activities and youth league activities and PWD. I believe the financial reporting is done in that way. Beth, kindly speak to what it is looking like for smaller parties. And by smaller here, I mean the parties that are not receiving funding from the exchequer to conduct activities, because this is one of the avenues in, in terms of where the women league is. When there are, there are money for programs, it means you have more women participating. In parties that do not have money for programs, it means that 
the women in those parties are pretty much just stooges within the positions that they hold. So can you speak to what it looks like for smaller parties that do not have access to the funding? Because it ties very closely to the you know, resource mobilization for women in political parties. Thank you. I would say um, actually all political parties are important, whether huge, big, or small parties. Uh, the point is each political party to ensure that they are very democratic so that whether it's a man or a woman who is fighting is given uh, the, the, um, the space. And uh, if they increase the numbers, they will of course qualify for the political party funding. Uh, secondly, I would say that uh, as the conversation is around increasing the number of women in political spaces, I would say the starting point, as one of us said, is you me as an individual. Women must believe in themselves. Women must have self-confidence. That is very key because it's me to believe in myself that I can and I am meant to be a leader in this nation and I will offer myself for leadership. I know you saw when uh, the former governor Mike Songo left office and there was a call from political parties for those who want to run for Nairobi governor. My name was there because I believe in myself. I felt I would be the next governor for Nairobi city, county. Yeah? And that's why I'm saying even come next year, my name will be on the ballot because I am determined. Because if I want change in this nation, it must start with me. Change starts with us. Every woman in this nation, believe in yourself, come out at any age, offer yourself to be a leader. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Beth. Uh, Bina, to you, the same question. Political party funding affects adversely how marginalized groups participate within the political parties based on the kind of programs that they can have internally. The smaller parties is, you know, I am corrected, uh, not the smaller parties rather, the parties that do not receive funding from the exchequer are disenfranchised in the sense that they are not able to conduct, you know, these kind of programs. Because when you look at the fundraising within the political party, it is one, the elected members contribute towards the party. Two, you have the different categories of membership within the political party well-wishers, and of course, other partners. And the component of receiving money from the exchequer is very important in the programming of political parties. So speak to the parties that do not receive that funding, how it looks for inclusion of women in the party structures. Um, I think for me, I also want to say that the bigger party that we're talking about today, they began somewhere. You know, they didn't just mushroom um, as bigger parties. They began somewhere. And it's important to also speak to the party ideology and also how you are mobilizing from the grassroots. Because also when you look at the bigger parties, quote unquote, that we are talking about, they have a very strong grassroots support, right? Um, let's say um, even a party where she belongs, the, you know, like after every fortnight or uh, after every month, their party conversations taking place that maybe even the national team does not even know about, but you know, like the ward chair, the constituency chair is actually in charge of that, right? Because I have seen that, um, you know, like us being mobilized within, like, within the wards, like you're going to host this meeting. So I think for me, because also that before anything changes, since it's also dependent on increasing your membership, I'd also be keen to um, emphasize how you're, gross, you, how you're growing your grassroots support, right? How you're growing your grassroots support, um, number one. And also even something that she mentioned, you know, how, like how can we still contribute to that kitty? You know, how can we contribute to that? If we're talking about even what chamas are doing to sustain homes, to sustain their businesses, these same chama women are the ones mobilizing for political parties. Then how do we also contribute in our own small ways, right? In our very own uh, little ways, because um, the more you increase your number, then the more you increase your chances um, of accessing uh, those particular resources. Um, 
the party I belong to is, you know, because I believe in their ideology. It's also how they are selling, how they are selling their manifesto, the commitment I am seeing, you know. So I think also just doing the work. When you, someone said that, kujituma, na kujituma pia kwa, you know, kujituma pia kwa community. Because penya wengine pia walianzia, ni kujituma pia. Yeah. How, um, how sufficient are the policies and legislation around ensuring that women are in the political party structures? How sufficient are the policies? Is the disconnect, where is the disconnect rather? Thank you. Um, the policies are there. No party can exist without um, representation. You cannot register with ORPP. So every party, by the way, on paper, they have the two thirds, okay? Um, where we go wrong now is what those two thirds actually means, whether they translate to influence, which has been the conversation of the afternoon. Uh, the answer is no. So the issue isn't necessarily the policies, it's the fact that we have people who are not following those policies because there are gaps. Um, they have to nominate, but then they are not showing you how they are nominating. So you'll have people who don't even belong to the party, they are inserted last minute, then they are nominated into parliament. We've seen people's children to girlfriends to wives. That's a fact. So it's just that people are not following the policies to a T. And to also go back to the conversation a little bit on political parties and their funding. There's a fund that exists for these major parties, yeah, through the Political Parties Act. Unfortunately, uh, we have parties who have, uh, frankly, hogged that fund because it's millions. So when you have the big parties having access to that fund, obviously, they will leave a gap uh, because those small parties have no money and these parties are being given these resources continuously. And so they will obviously be well fueled and leave the smaller parties behind. So people are talking about that policy and seeing ways to be able to change it, amend it in a way where it's also accessible to others and not necessarily hogged by the major parties because that gap uh, will continue to exist. And also myself and Bina, we've been having conversations around how can we have protection within political parties through policies? We've talked about gender-based violence, sexual harassment. What are parties doing? What are their plans? Because this is public information. Article 35 allows us to ask political parties to share this information because they are vehicles that are supposed to be representing the public. So they should share that with us. I believe that what we need to push for is some form of review to sort of see how these parties are structured. Because people are here, they are members of political parties, but then do they ask, what is my party doing? How, are they, how am I holding that party accountable? We can't just be engaged in political party primaries. You want to know how it's working. It's the same way when you're putting your child in a school. How is that school working? Ama, you don't care. You just wait for the end term. You're hoping one apita exams. So you're wondering who's the teacher, how is the teacher teaching, is my child, it's the same thing. You're investing in a party, how is it functioning, where is my money going, because you paid to be a member, and that representative who has gone to represent me, is that vehicle functioning? I don't think Kenyans participate in that aspect, and we need to push for more of that participation. Um, I believe you're ready to take it on as well. So. Same question. <laughs> well, uh, we, we cannot overemphasize the role of management of political parties. And democratic as we are, as a country, protected you know, by our constitution, no one can stop anyone. You know, from registering a political party as long as you meet, you know, the requirements that have been put by the ORPP. We also know that uh, financing of political parties uh, was one of the thorny issues within the NASA coalition. Uh, blame game, you know, in there that we saw, you know, in the media. 
one of the parties being accused of like not sharing you know the cake with the others and a variety of other reasons and then the, the, that marriage broke i know by my own knowledge that orpp has actually developed a, pot a petition that they will be presenting to parliament very soon maybe this week next week but very soon um to 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 revise or amend you know the political parties act of 2011 to include some form of a formula for sharing you know that fund so that political parties that participate you know that participate remember it's key you have to participate you have to fill the candidates at a company mutumoja somewhere you know but have some propose some formula where on a pro pro rata basis political parties that participate then will get something so that it's not one or two parties taking you know the whole the whole cake and i'm thinking that if it sees the light of day will really strengthen the political parties even the young ones you know that are just you know coming and those that are yet to be registered will motivate them to ensure that they also field candidates in in whatever places and ensure that they actually uh, participate now back to political parties itself we cannot be blind to politics of the day but politics within the political party if you come to Kanu, we have our own you go to another party they have their own like that like that so especially as as a woman aspirant as a woman uh, who's holding a party you know position you cannot be blind and 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 wise you know to to this thing so that you know how to navigate your way around to ensure that you are sitting on that table that table that matters that you're influencing decisions that are being made that you move things to a point where they say this decision cannot we can discuss it discuss it but it cannot be concluded except so and so is on the table so even if they sit in the middle of the night and you you can't they can only discuss they can only go <laughs> so far with it but it's gonna take again i agree with my fellow panelists that it's gonna take everybody's effort do not be a spectator on the fence and they're throwing stones at how bad political parties are behaving and you yourself you're not a member of any in gear parley there's quite a variety to choose from and if you're searching make kanu your choice today and just join us because we are present we, we are going to produce the fifth okay but anyhow my point is be a member of a political party and engage you know in there all these things that you're seeing not right make your voice be heard in a way that you're contributing towards strengthening towards making better anything that you feel you know is is, is not right because participating in politics is everybody's responsibility and even as women sitting here and and and, and in in the audience we need to come out and tell everyone that uwezi sema ati mimi eh siasa ni chafu mimi siguzi hiyo the ugali you eat or you don't eat is because of a political process the hospital you go to and fail to get medicine or you're treated badly the school your child goes to the road you walk on as you're going to them all those are political and we need to let the populace know that politics is not just voting that day of voting it's a whole system and it's a whole cycle thank you Kingster, please allow me to yes. correct this. This cannot go uncorrected. Just give me a minute. My sister mentioned about NASA. Her party was not a member of NASA. What happened about the political party funding that they were arguing about? Those are details that are only known by the partners because the memorandum that they wrote, the agreement that they made before concerning how they will run the coalition, it is very different. We cannot give that an, as an example of the political party funding uh, processes because the funding that get, came out was not based on presidential votes or numbers. It was on the numbers of an individual political party. How many members of parliament did a party have or does a party have? So that is why ODM was getting money because of our numbers. 
if Wiper and others who did not get enough numbers, they could not enjoy our money because the money was not on a presidential. We had only joined point at the presidential and the funding is not based on the presidential numbers or presidential vote. It is on our member of parliament and senators. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think if you don't follow, it is 40 members of county assembly, right? And 40 members of uh, national assembly and senate and four governors. That is a threshold that a party is supposed to meet to get access to the funding. And that's why she's saying uh, it is not based on the presidential election alone. Uh, I wanted you to make your final remarks. I want to give each of the panelists a minute. Just give us your final remarks. How can we push political parties to have more women in their structures? One minute each, and then we wrap up. Want me to start? Thank you. I would uh, urge political parties to give space to women and mm, women be encouraged to join political parties. As Betty said, it is very important that people come out and become party members. It starts with registering as a political party member. Um, finally, I would say that, uh, of course, I would ask members to join ODM party. Registration is free. You dial hash 834-STAR and 036, and you become a member of ODM. Free, free. We are not charging anything. You become a political party member of ODM. Come 2022, my name will be on the ballot for Embakasi South. Thank you very much. Um, I think mine is to say, don't be a passive member uh, within a political party. Don't be a passive member in your community. Infiltrate all the position. Politics is just not about running for office. Political party positions are open, and we have elective positions within political parties as ward chair, as constituency chair, as national chair, as county chair, there are so many other positions. So it's just not about elective position and even appointive position. Become the next chief in your community. You know, like if infiltrate all the leadership position because they're influential in one way um, or another. And for young women out there, please, like please, please join political parties, show up leadership opportunities, whether it's within the university, whether it's within your communities, whatever it is, show up for these leadership opportunities. To our Chama women, keep being you, and also don't just mobilize for politicians. Run for these political positions. Um, I think mine is to change the political culture um, that we see. I, I get worried because of the rise of violence I don't think we're in a good place in our country where to measure whether you can enter politics is to see how many goons you can get and how you can rally up a crowd and rough them up. Um, I don't think we should be heading in that direction. So to push for parties to have policies that make it safe for everyone. If it's safe for women, it's safe for children, it's safe for everyone. And, and that should be key for all of us to push for transparent and accountable processes. There's too much corruption and corruption is killing us. Thank you so much, uh, the organizers of this uh, event. It's been an honor you know, to sit in front of young people and share our thoughts on what matters as we get towards uh, 2022. A disclaimer, please. When I was mentioning about NASA, I made reference to the media, and the media has reported as such. It was not my personal uh, thoughts. Now, I said earlier, please get into political parties to get elected, if not to get nominated, if not to get appointment appointed. Those three things. 
will only happen if you're part of a political party and not as a passive member. You have to get in, be a member, be visible, be heard, let the party see what you're doing for yourself, but let the party also see what you're doing for that political party. Believe me, across the board, political parties see these things. As young women, we, we, it's always said that what a man does, a woman, and even a young woman, needs to act four times more, you know, to get it. Meaning that mountain is <laughs> steeper, is harder, is full of more thorns and stones, you know, uh, for women. But just know that we are here to help you as we also struggle, you know, for our own. Get in touch with me. I mentor so many young women on leadership, political leadership, you know, included in my own personal capacity, nothing to do with Kanu. Because at the end of the day, the more women we have in county assemblies, in both houses of parliament, will result in better things, you know, for everyone. And also, lastly, I'm also coming into the ballot, Westlands uh, MP, please, let us, <laughs> let us join hands together and pull really together as women, if, if you ask me. So that the, the, the more the numbers that get in, in those elective positions, the louder and the better and more quality of our voice that we will all have collectively to strengthen democracy uh, in our country. Otherwise, God bless you. I want to remind us where we started, that Article 38 on political rights, 2B, says that any of us who is a member of a political party can hold any office within the political party where they are a member. And with that, I'd like to thank my panelists, Beth Siengo, a round of applause, Bina Maseno, Nerima Wako, and Betty Adera. Asante Nisana. All right, a round of applause, gentlemen. Strength of women, Makofi Ongeseke Jawani. Men in the house, can you please keep on clapping? Yes. Asanteni Sana Kinadada Bilashaka. The future is promising with the ladies in the front. Sindio? Wangapi wanakubali? Wangapi wanakubali? Wangapi wanakubali? The future of Kenya is bright. The future of Kenya and Africa is bright when women are ahead. Wangapi wanakubali? Enua mkono juhewa. If you're not raising your hand, you are stopping your own mother, your own sister from development, shetani ya shindwe. Shetani ya shindwe. Keme ya shindwe. Ya shindwe kabisa. Eh, hawa jamaa, hawa. Hawa ni wale kuchukua sadaka. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, it has been an amazing day today. So wrapping up this evening, closing this stage for us, is one very beautiful lady. Very beautiful, I repeat, very beautiful. She's coming here with a very strong peace. She is a poet. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies, ladies, Mwana muna, muna, muna tulia hivyo sana. Chunga hapa kuna feminist hapa, my friend. Ukiongea mbaya. Ukiongea mbaya. <laughs> Maneno itarudishwa. Maneno itarudishwa. The lady is as beautiful as her name. Put your hands together for Karambo. <laughs> Keep on clapping until she comes. That's your work this evening. Keep on clapping. Keep on clapping.
Keep on clapping. Karembo, keep on clapping. Naona my fans, my fans wa Arsenal wako hapa ndani. Wamezoea kufungwa. Na mani wako wapi? Karembo hii makofi ni mingi, karembo. Keep on clapping.